Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well today. So, last night in my video, I was reading to you guys about grave soaking, and in the article, it was talking about something called the Toronto Blessing. So, I wanted to come on and um, read for you what the Toronto Blessing is, and I almost feel like I want to do a series on the different things that these so-called Christian churches um, are practicing because there's a lot of people that are claiming Jesus Christ and claiming with their mouth the lip service that I was talking about and these churches that are so wicked um, that I want to share with you what is out there because even this I didn't know about and so um, all of these things they're not of God and God is not um, a, a God where he wants people barking like dogs, crawling on the ground, having seizures all over the ground, uh, basically making a spectacle of themselves so that people will look at them instead of looking at the Holy Spirit and looking at the Lord. That is um, a show for them. And, you know, there's... Uh, People that will say that they're holier because they've been anointed by the Holy Spirit or whatever it is. And at the end of this, I'll share a story with you of something that happened to me um, when I was young and dumb, as they say, and I went to a charismatic church. Um, you know, when I uh, got away from, I don't want to say got away from my parents, but I grew older and I was exploring on my own and my mom and dad were willing to let me kind of explore different churches and stuff and let me kind of figure it out on my own. And I'll explain to you the uh, events that took place at this church so that hopefully you can be aware. And if you are in a church like this, I highly advise you, highly advise you to get out now because this is not of God in any way, shape, or form. So let's get started on the uh, what the Toronto Blessing is. So the Toronto Blessing is a supposed outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the people of Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship, formerly the Toronto Airport Vineyard Church. On January 20th, 1994, a Pentecostal pastor by the name of Randy Clark spoke at the church and gave his testimony of how he would get drunk in the spirit. And I will go and do what that means also, maybe in the next video, uh, how he would get drunk in the spirit and laugh uncontrollably. In response to this testimony, the congregation erupted in pandemonium with people laughing, growling, dancing, shaking, barking like dogs, and even being stuck in positions of paralysis. These experiences were attributed to the Holy Spirit entering people's bodies. But that's not, that's, that's ridiculous. The pastor of the church, John Arnott, referred to it as a big Holy Spirit party the moniker Toronto Blessing was given and the church was soon in its uh, international spotlight. When this blessing is held to the light of scripture, however, it can scarcely be called such. Absolutely nowhere in scripture can one find a precedent for what is happening at the Toronto Airport Church. The nearest that scripture comes to describing the paralysis and bizarre behavior prompted by the blessing, the Toronto blessing, are its documented effects of demonic possession. The Dur Toronto Airport Church became known for its congregants' emotional outbursts and odd psychological displays. Pastor Anat began focusing almost exclusively on the party of the Holy Spirit experiences were being held in higher esteem than scripture. This was even too much for the extremely charismatic vineyard movement, which severed ties with their Toronto airport church, prompting the name change. Uh, and it goes on about that. A believer's focus needs to be Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, not on oneself 
or one's experiences, but on the Holy Spirit. The Toronto Blessing focuses on the other two, the uh, experiences and on oneself. Um, Believers can have fun, dance, and sing, and even shout to the Lord. However, when worship service becomes a free-for-all for fits, seizures, and uncontrollable outbursts, all attributed to the Holy Spirit, something is definitely wrong. The church should be characterized by it, the adherence of the Word of God, rejoicing and reasonableness known to everyone. So, a church like this, uh, like I was saying, they are having these outbursts and seizures and barking like dogs and, and spitting and screaming and yelling and it's all about the experience. Um, so when I was younger, I don't even remember how old I was. I must have been at least 18 or 19. Um, I went to a church that was a charismatic just like this. And I was learning my way as, you know, but I had been raised in a Christian home. So I knew the difference. I knew how to discern. But I was blinded there for a moment because... Um, you know, I didn't see it right away, but, uh, you know, I noticed that when prayer was going or worship was going, that people would automatically start running around the churches, jumping up and down, screaming. People would be, uh, what they thought was speaking in tongues and, but they just sounded like gibberish, um, and then the people would go up front and the pastor would, lay his hands on them, and then they would do the, the, you know, the passing out and laying on the ground. And the pastor would tell people that if they don't pass, you know, if they don't have the holy anointing to where they are laying on the ground, basically in a seizure or in a um, paralysis kind of a state, that you don't have the Holy Spirit in you because the Holy Spirit can't be found, basically. And... um you know, being young, I didn't realize it at the time. I just thought something was wrong with me. I thought, gosh, I was starting to get very irritated and frustrated because I didn't understand why that wasn't happening to me. And um, I praise God that it didn't happen to me because it's demonic. And I was asked to attend the youth camp as a counselor um, for the youth. And I agreed and it was me and a, a couple of other um, adults went to assist with these younger kids, these high school age kids. And when we got there, the church service seemed even worse than the church that I had been going to. Um, the kids were just acting ridiculous, just like I said, barking like dogs, foaming at the mouth, spitting, yelling, screaming, whatever. And I remember this one kid, um, he began to laugh. And they call it holy laughter. And I'll do something on that too. Uh, they call it holy laughter. That's when I first learned about what holy laughter really is and where it comes from. And um, this, he wasn't a kid because he was there as a counselor, but um, he started laughing and continually laughing, laughing, laughing. Well, you know, I knew better. I wanted to get out of this place. The Lord was opening my eyes right then and there this is not for me. And I wanted to get out of there. But of course, we took a bus. <laughs> I couldn't just leave. So I was stuck. And, um, you know, I would start, I would just dive into the word of God. And I would just pray. I could feel even at that young age, I could feel the presence of evil. And I knew that Satan was at work. And I could feel the presence of darkness. And I was praying against all the darkness and and I had my Bible open and I'm going to tell you something I have never forgotten this in my whole, whole entire life I have never forgotten this I even can even visualize what it looked like but 
I had my Bible open and I was praying and I was, I was actually physically screaming out to God for him to, uh, you know, come in and release all of the demons in this place. And that guy that had the holy laughter, um, you could hear the demon in him and the demon was speaking through him and he was not happy with me because I was praying to Jesus Christ and I was saying the name of Jesus Christ and he was um, sitting there and it went from laughing to like growling and I just remember the Holy Spirit just gave me power and right then and there I said I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ release and get away from him and get away from me and I had my Bible open and I was reading scriptures and I didn't touch the guy <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to transfer anything uh, even though I know I'm I'm saved and sealed and nothing can hurt me but being young you know you don't realize that too much but anyways um I heard like a loud squealing, screaming, high-pitched grossness, um, and it came out of him. And he sat there like he was exhausted, um, like he had been through a marathon. And, you know, I'm not saying this to toot my own horn. I'm not saying this to lift myself up or puff myself up. I'm just sharing with you that that this whole stuff this charismatic movement the stuff that's going on the barking and the squealing and all of that stuff it's not of god it is demonic and people who are instantly throwing themselves on the ground you when you see stuff like that 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 is a demon inside of them that is not the holy spirit the holy spirit does not boast and the holy spirit does not um do things for the show and to, uh, you know, people should not be puffing themselves up. Um, it's all about the Lord. It's not about you. So needless to say, I left that church. The minute I returned home from that camp, I left that church and I never looked back. Um, so we can see now I'm kind of learning more and more about it and what the different names that they're called, but they're all pretty much the same and they all pretty much do the same thing. Um, but we need to put our trust in Jesus Christ and we need to believe in him and, and what he did on the cross for us. And we need to believe and be thankful for what he did on the cross because he did that for us. He did that so that we could have a choice to be with him and we could have that free gift of salvation to spend forever with him. And I was telling my brother, um, Greg Jackson earlier that, um, and if you haven't checked out his page, you need to do that. So, cause he's an awesome, awesome guy. Um, I was telling him earlier, you know, Jesus's death on the cross was like a free gift with purchase, right? He purchased that gift to give you that free gift. So you didn't have to pay anything for it. And he's offering that free gift to you. And if you choose not to take that gift, you are, you know, going to be separated from him for all eternity. And that's a horrible thought. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit about the Toronto blessing and how wicked it is. And I was reading more about the drunk in the spirit, and that is even worse. And I'm going to come on in a different video and kind of read for you what that means so that you can be aware. And um, like I said earlier, if you are in a church that is doing these things or um, have have seen this stuff, I urge you to get away from it now Find a church that is Bible-believing, grace-teaching, Christ-filled, and Christ-centered church. Um, soak yourself into the Word of God, into prayer, and allow Him to lead you in the direction that He wants you to go. So with that, I love you guys, and I will talk to you later.